Have you ever thought to yourself, why am I so ugly? Or I wish I could change this thing about myself. Or if only I looked a certain way, I would be so much happier with myself. Because these are all things I've thought about on a daily basis at numerous stages of my life. So today's video, we're going to be talking about body image, which is something I believe is a universal struggle. Everyone deals with it in some way. And this first episode is a part of a series where I want to talk about my own personal experience with body image, but also how a lot of those issues surrounding body image and body dysmorphia connect with society as we know it, but also the history behind a lot of the problems with body image that we see today, and also how we can work towards loving our bodies for what they are. In today's episode, I'm going to be telling you from the very beginning, the relationship I have with my body. To be honest, it's very hard to do. It's something I feel like I'm constantly talking about. And this relationship I have with my body is just constantly evolving and changing. And every year, every week, my perception and view and the way I feel about my body is also changing. Ever since I was really young, I really, really love to eat. And when I look at old photos of myself, I always got something in hand that's in my mouth. And I don't remember at what point I went from a little girl who just found joy in, in eating and then becoming a teenager and an adult who developed a very unhealthy and toxic relationship with food. My family and relatives started off with supposedly harmless jokes about how much I love my meat, how much I love my food, and underlying all of that, I always felt they were trying to say that I was a bigger kid because I ate so much. And I think it was those jokes which were meant to be harmless that started creating this insecurity inside of me where I began to slowly think about my body and what it looked like. I come from a Chinese family and so when you look at East Asian beauty standards, we're talking about fair pale skin and thin bodies. It was very difficult because Every part of me did not fit that description. I am 154, so number one, I'm on the short side. I've had, I have a big head and I was always really insecure about that. And by Asian beauty standards, they tend to really love people with small faces. And I had really bad acne growing up. And yeah, I was always on the bigger side since I was a baby. My mother, I think, took three days to give birth to me. And I remember one time an aunt telling me, she put her hand on my thigh and she was like touching it and she said, oh my god, your thighs are like twice the size of everyone else's. And I laughed and acted like it didn't bother me, but that, that moment really hurt and left a deep impression in my mind. And I had countless repetitions of incidents like that happen again and again throughout my childhood. I think a lot of my fellow Asians would agree that often when you go to big family gatherings and you see an aunt or an uncle or like relatives, family friends that you haven't seen for a while, the first thing they will comment on is your appearance. And for girls, it's usually either, oh, it looks like you've gained weight recently or like if you've lost weight they'll be like oh you look so good you slimmed down with boys it's oh you've grown taller or like maybe he needs to drink more of this kind of soup and that'll help like give him some nutrition and like boost his height over time in high school i went to a co-ed school and there were a lot of asians at my school and whenever i would look at the other East Asian girls. They were all so petite and so skinny and I honestly felt like a monster next to them. I remember there was this 
one time where all the girls were comparing their wrist sizes and they would put their thumb and forefinger around their wrist like this to see if it would touch and mine, mine couldn't, like it never has been. And it made me feel terrible and I felt really fat in that moment, honestly. The more aware I became of how imperfect my body was, the more I started to think about how I would change it. And so then began the really unhealthy eating patterns from, you know, trying to starve myself to attempting to cut food groups to convincing myself I was going to exercise and lose weight. I just felt very ugly then and undesired and unwanted. And I wondered a lot about who would ever love me. So there was this one night when I was 16 years old, it was about 10 PM and I left the house to go on a run because I think I'd been busy in a day or something, but I needed to go exercise that day because I was trying to lose weight. And I was doing some stretches under this street lamp because it was only the only part of the street that was lit. And then this middle aged man approached me and he started talking to me. And at one point he started following me and asking me all these questions like, oh, do you live here? Do you have a boyfriend? You're so pretty. And I started to get really scared because I was like, why does this man keep talking to me? Is he going to rape me? Is he going to kidnap me? But my body was kind of frozen and I couldn't leave, even though I really, really wanted to. Um, some fucked up part of my brain didn't want to be impolite. Um, I had a really hard time. I, I always had a really hard time saying no when I was younger. And then at one point he leaned over and he kissed me on the cheek. And I really started to freak out at, at that point. And so I pretended that my phone vibrated in my pocket and that I got a call from my mom. And so I talked on the phone. I was like, oh yeah, mom, I'm coming home right now. And then after that, I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I gotta go. My mom's calling me and I just sprinted all the way home. But when I got home, I was really upset and I cried about it. And I only ever told one person, which was this friend I met on Maple Story. And the reason why I never told anyone this story is because I genuinely didn't think anybody would believe me, which sounds ridiculous. I was so insecure about my body that I was afraid people would think, you're so ugly, no one would want to sexually harass you. So I never told anyone because I thought, I'm not beautiful. Why would anyone believe that some old man would try to hit on me? At 17, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder called Graves' disease, and I lost eight kilos, surprisingly. One of the fucked up thing was that so many people told me I was lucky, that I was sick, because one of the symptoms of this autoimmune disorder is you lose weight because your thyroid becomes so overactive that your metabolism metabolism speeds up and so they were telling me that oh you know they wish they had it because it must be such a great thing to be able to eat anything and just lose weight and you know what I felt good because people were complimenting me and saying that I looked a lot better and I believed them even though it was at the expense of my own health and then my doctor warned me because he said, once you start taking meds and your condition normalizes, you will put weight back on. So just watch your eating habits. Because the problem was the increased metabolism made me hungry really easy. So I developed really bad eating habits of constantly binging on food, but it wasn't a problem because my metabolism would just burn it off. But once my metabolism had normalized, those eating habits remained and the result was that I put on a lot of weight and I was probably the heaviest I've ever been. By the time I got to uni, I was sort of sick or feeling sorry for myself. So I was determined to start my fitness journey get active, get fit, completely change up my diet so that I would only be eating whole foods and 
staying away from anything junk related. Um, I started exercising five to six times a week following some online workout programs and I found that yeah I, I lost I started to lose weight and I started to feel confident and strong and overall I did notice a lot of benefits like I felt like a much more confident person but anytime I would have a cheat meal anytime I missed a workout I would feel absolutely so guilty and I would punish myself every time afterwards by working myself so much harder to try burn off all the food I had eaten then one day I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw an old friend from primary school and she does pole dancing and when I saw her video um, with this newfound confidence I had I thought to myself I really want to try that because it looks really fun and cool and so I went to this trial class where I tried pole for the first time and I just absolutely fell in love with it. I got addicted to pole pretty fast because it gave me something to work on every week. And I felt confident every time I achieved a new move. I felt stronger. I liked that in the community we celebrated lots of different body types. But at the same time, you did see a lot of people who were very toned, very fit. I developed this new kind of mentality where I kind of equated a toned, slim body to what health looked like. And so I became a little bit obsessed with, you know, I wanted a flat stomach, I wanted a six pack, I wanted to have toned arms. In this period, I convinced myself that I was on the right track because I was no longer centering my body goals around losing weight, but I was focusing on being strong and being healthy and confident. But in reality, I think I really just ditched one body ideal and replaced it with another in the name of health. I told myself that having a six pack, being toned and slender was good because it meant that I was healthy but at the end of the day it was still me telling myself that I could only be happy if my body looked a certain way then comes 2020 the freaking apocalypse of a year and the entire city goes into lockdown and all of a sudden there's an influx of dieting ads fitness ads and there's and this pressure that I have to come out of quarantine looking better than I did when I went into quarantine. But the confusion, the way quarantine threw everything into chaos, there were so many emotions there and my way of coping with it was actually, I started to binge eat. I got really hooked on Uber Eats. I got sick of cooking for myself all the time. So it became my way of dealing with my emotions. And I put on a lot of weight. After I'd put on the weight, I'd feel immense guilt, guilt. And I'd go into this period where I'd be like, okay, now I have to lose all the weight. You know, I've done it before. I can do it again. And so I would be active for a few weeks. I'd lose a little bit of weight. Then it would cycle back. I would binge eat again. And then I would feel like I have to lose the weight again. And so it would go on like this. Then one day I was browsing TikTok and I saw this video where this girl was talking about body neutrality. And that got me really interested. And I started to listen to a lot of podcasts. The thing with body positivity that doesn't work for me is that it places a lot of pressure on me to love my body, which is equally as draining as me hating my body. And so what I liked about this idea I came to learn about body neutrality is reaching a neutral point where we learn to respect and appreciate our bodies for what it does for us. I started to listen to more podcasts also about the history of like fat phobia and diet culture. And I realized I actually had a lot of internalized fat phobia because I always looked at other people in big bodies and I never felt like they were any less 
than other people in society. And yet a big part of me always had that fear of existing in a larger body. And I started to think to myself, what message am I sending people if on one hand I'm telling them it's okay to exist on a bigger body and in the same sentence I am complaining about how scared I am to gain weight and to be a bigger size. And so that's why I really wanted to make this series because I really want to take myself on a path of discovery where I begin to unpack everything society has programmed me to believe about my body and see whether or not it is possible for me to look at my body differently. Nowadays, I've just reached a point where Sometimes I will still look at my body and it feels like the most grotesque thing I've ever seen. And I feel undesired and unwanted and I wonder who is ever going to love this thing. And on other days I look at my body and I think, you are so strong, you are so capable and like thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for holding me up each day and making it possible for me to do all these amazing things. I don't know how long it's going to take to get to a point where I don't have to deal with the first part, but for now I'm kind of content with where I'm going and I think it will be a continual process of learning to accept myself for who I am. And I hope everyone tunes in for the next episode if this was interesting to you. And if you are comfortable, only if you are comfortable, you are welcome to share your own experiences or your own relationship with your body. I would love to hear it. Thank you so much. And please subscribe, like, and comment if you found this video valuable or if you want to keep seeing videos from me. Thank you. Bye.